الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وتبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد Today we will start with Surah Al-Ghashiyah Surah Al-Ghashiyah is a Meccan Surah according to the consensus of the scholars uh, The name of the Surah is according to the majority of the books of Tafsir is Al-Ghashiyah It was revealed after Surah Al-Dhariyat and before Surah Ashura, and some scholars said it's before Surah uh, Al-Kahf. There is no particular reason behind the revelation of the Surah. Uh, if you recollect, when we were talking about Surah Al-A'la, uh, I stated a narration that is in the book of Imam Muslim, narrated by an Nu'man ibn Bashir, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to recite Surat Al-A'la and Al-Ghashiyah in the Jum'ah prayer and the Eid prayers. And if Eid coincided with the Friday, he would also recite these two surahs. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal says, هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ الْغَاشِيَةِ has there reached you the news of the overwhelming calamity or event? This is talking about the, uh, the resurrection day. Now the speech here is to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but it's general uh, and it addresses all of us, as the entire speech of the Quran addressed Muhammad sallallahu in many cases in particular, but it's meant to be general for all people as well. Amr ibn Maymun radiallahu anhu, and this is uh, reported by Ibn Kathir and classified as authentic by uh, Sheikh al Dadu. May Allah preserve him. Uh, said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa one night went out walking in the streets of Medina. And he heard or overheard an old lady reciting Quran from one of the houses as he was passing by. So he stopped. And that lady started reciting, هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ الْغَاشِيَةِ so the Prophet ﷺ cried and cried until, until he had to sit down. The ayah says, Hal ataka, has there reached you? So what was his response والسلام, He said, Naam atani, naam atani. Yes, it has reached me. Yes, it has reached me. Now, the reason for the Prophet وسلم, crying uh, is understandable because it's talking about an event that's going to be overwhelming, that overtakes everything. With its difficulties, its hardships, its terror, its punishment. It is indeed overwhelming and it's touching to the heart. It's terrifying and with this Allah paved the way for the rest of the verses in the surah to put us in that mood that you are going to be overwhelmed with what you're going to be reading after this verse because it is going to be talking about the events of the hereafter. Now starting the surah, as the scholar said, starting the chapter or the surah with a question indicates the importance of what is being asked or what this question is asking about and indicating that the news of whatever is being asked about in the surah is something that deserves your attention and your preparation. And if you notice, 
and particularly in the Meccan surahs, the speech about the resurrection day is something that's repeated often. Uh, it reminds people, it warns people, it brings glad tidings to people, it moves the fear and hope within the hearts, it awakens the conscience of the person so it doesn't go to sleep, it doesn't numb out, it doesn't become heedless. And perhaps for those who don't believe, it might move them and touch a certain nerve, if you may, that can wake them up and lead them to the guidance of Islam. Some faces that day will be humbled. Now here Allah Azza wa Jal starts mentioning or listing some of the news of the day of resurrection, that overwhelming day. But Allah Azza wa Jal starts here mentioning the events or the verses related to those deserving punishment before he talks about or he addressed those who deserved his reward. The reason as, <clears throat> excuse me, the reason as some of the scholars of Tafsir said, behind starting with this as opposed to starting with the uh, blissful verses is that it goes along, it's coherent with the introductory verse that was meant to give you that fear, that scary feeling about that day, that overwhelming day. Wujuhun yawma idin khasha. Humbled. You know, the reason Allah Azza wa Jal spoke about people's faces because that's where you see the trace of the person's feelings and emotions. When someone is happy, it reflects on his face. When someone is afraid, it reflects on his face. When someone is lying, it reflects on his face. So humility and humbleness will reflect on these people's faces on the day of resurrection and it will reflect and show their disgrace on that day. Why? Because they're expecting the consequence. They became certain now that what they were warned against, what they were promised will be the consequence of their denial, is actually becoming a fact. They're living the reality. So they're seeing things and expecting worse than what they're seeing. So that's all reflected on their face. Amilatun nasiba. Working hard and extremely exhausted. Now, this adds to the agony. This description adds to the depression they'll be feeling because they denied faith and for the believers who disobeyed, they refused to abide. They refrained from performing good deeds and adhering to the commandments of Allah Azza wa and refraining from the prohibitions. They favored this worldly life with its interim pleasures and joy and favored that over that of the hereafter, the eternal bliss and reward uh, of the hereafter, which resulted in humbleness to be reflected on their faces. People who deny and believers who disobey work very hard to obtain this life. People who work in, in business, they have their own business. 
they go very early. For those who pray amongst them, they probably leave at Fajr time, if not before, and pray Fajr in the shop or wherever, right? And work long and long and long hours for no other reason but dunya, right? I remember once I was in one of the countries, I had a, a da'wah program, and one of the people of the congregation, Muslim congregation, accompanied, accompanied me, accompanied me, the mumbling of the mouth now, uh, to his shop. And uh, the Dhuhr prayer came. It was time to pray Dhuhr. I said, uh, let's go pray. He said, no, no. I'm going to combine Dhuhr and Asr. I said, what for? He said, I, I do that because um, who's going to be in the shop? I said, subhanAllah. You combine Dhuhr and Asr every day so that you don't leave your shop and you don't want to lose uh, business and customers. He said, yes, Sheikh, be lenient. He said, no, he did. You're smiling. He said, be lenient, be a little softer than this. I mean, come on, it's not that bad. So this person works his back out, right? He, he works long hours. He sacrifices his prayer for the sake of the dollar, right? And labors very hard. But then what's the consequence? exhaustion in this dunya and in the hereafter. Now, as for the disbelievers on the hereafter, they'll be weary of what? You know, Allah Azza wa in different verses of the Quran describe those who will be punished and what's going to happen to them. They'll be chained. So can you imagine someone being changed with, uh, chained with heavy chains and carrying uh, shackles and, and being dragged on their faces and the, the, the flame of the fire touching. This is very tiring, very exhausting, physically and psychologically. Allah is describing the state of those who disbelieve or disobey. And what's going to happen to them in this dunya as well as uh, in the hereafter. Now, there is a, a point that must be made here is that our efforts in this life as believers are of two types, one pertaining to dunya and one pertaining to akhirah. Now, having said what I said doesn't mean that we don't uh, exert effort in order to earn our bread and livelihood for the family. No, but what is meant here is to put things in the proper perspective, to give everything its correct due, and not to make this dunya overwhelm us to the extent that we compromise the akhirah for the sake of dunya. And as for the matters pertaining to the Akhirah, then we must remember that there are two conditions for efforts, for deeds, our efforts here, translated into the deeds, good deeds, to be accepted. One, that it has to be sincerely done for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, purely for Allah Azza wa Jal. And number two, it has to coincide with the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If either of these if one is fulfilled and the other isn't, then the deed will be rejected by Allah. Allah goes on to say, Allah is still talking about the faces here. They will enter to burn in an intensely hot, blazing fire. Now, this fire is a punishment in different ways. They will be seeing it and 
Merely seeing the fire is a psychological punishment. They will hear it as in some, some verses in the Quran. They will hear it breathing. They will see its smoke. They will see its flame. The heat will touch them and then their faces will be burnt as this is the first thing that will go in in the fire of hell. We ask Allah's protection. They will be given drink uh, from a boiling spring. Uh, if you've ever seen a, a spring gushing, it's the sweetest water that anyone can drink, right? Tastes beautiful. Now, these people who are being punished in fire, see, when you, you, when you become hot, what comes to mind? Water, right? When these people are punished, and thirst becomes to the maximum, we ask Allah's protection, then rescue comes, but in the form of an intensely hot, fire, hot water as a form of additional punishment to them. لَيْسَ لَهُمْ طَعَامٌ for them there will be no food except from a thorny plant. After mentioning what they will get when they request water, when they become thirsty, Allah here is mentioning the type of food that they will be getting to eat. It was described to be a thorny, poisonous, hot, rough, and bitter plant. Abu Darda radiallahu anhu said, Allah, as a form of punishment, will cause the people of hell to become so hungry that the suffering they will be suffering from hunger will become equivalent to the suffering of being burnt with the fire. This is unimaginable. We can't perceive that because this is something that we've never experienced and we ask Allah Azza wa We ask Allah Azza wa never to make us experience this. He said, and then, They'll shout out for rescue out of hunger. And this is what they will be provided with to eat. لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع Which neither nourishes, nourishes them nor avails against hunger. You see, when someone eats, people usually eat for two reasons. Either they're hungry, so they need something to fulfill their hunger, to suffice them from hunger, right? Or they have weak bodies and they need to nourish their bodies in order to strengthen them, right? Allah describes this plant, this thorny, bitter, poisonous, rough, hot plant to be something that will neither fulfill this nor that. No benefit. It's merely a form uh, of punishment. You see, Allah Azza wa Jal is, is describing things which we in our practical life in this dunya never saw. We saw similar things. But the extent of that, the reality and essence of what Allah is talking about is something that's beyond our imagination. But only those things that are much milder than what is being described, only those that we see in this dunya are enough to deter anyone 
from disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal. When the Prophet Sallallahu described the heat of the hellfire and the multiples of the intensity of the heat, the companion said, this worldly fire would have been enough. He said, no, Allah Azza wa Jal made it so much intense that they will taste the punishment. So imagine, if one imagines that he is sitting in a fire, a normal fire from this dunya, and when he is thirsty, thirsty they, they give him boiling, extremely boiling water that's been boiling for three hours, for example, right? And when he is hungry, someone grabs something that's thorny and bitter and poisonous and extremely hot and gives it to him to eat. This is in dunya, right? Can you imagine the suffering that one will go through consuming this, this plant or this whatever and drinking that type of water and being in that environment of burning hot fire? Well, in the hereafter, these things are going to be multiplied in order for people to be punished even severer than what they perceived in this but Allah Azza wa is given examples of things that are the maximum that we can imagine. But still they are more difficult and more painful. We ask Allah Azza wa to protect us from that. Let us conclude this session at this verse and we will resume in the following session. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfirullah.